This is the order from Judge Askarati. Judge Askarati is the judge who presided over the trial. And yes, it is very common and normal for the judge who presides, presides over the trial to issue the order on whether the judge will preside over the trial again. It's interesting how that works. You petition the judge who is over your trial for everything, including removing themselves from the trial. And shockingly, most of the time, the judges uh, decide that, no, they should stay on the trial no matter how much prejudice you think they have. But sometimes they don't. But what they do is provide appeal points on those on those things if you maintain your objection. Here, these are motions for a new trial where they politely ask the judge to consider the fact that the judge did everything in the fucking trial wrong. And uh, so let's see how that worked out for him. I'm sure it went great. So this cause came before the court upon defendant Amber Laura Hurd's post-trial motions. After review of the defendant's post-trial motions, plaintiff's opposition and the relevant statutes and case law, it is therefore ordered as follows. Defendant Amber Laura Hurd's post-trial motions one through six are denied for the reasons stated on the record. Now, those reasons would have been stated in court on the record. They're not listed here. You can just imagine how it probably went. These motions are frivolous, bullshit, and you know it. They're pointless. There's no merit to any of them. Defendant Amber Laura Hurd's post-trial motion seven is likewise denied for the reason outlined below. This is juror number 15, and this was the point of contention. But I said that this is untimely. It's way too late to be questioning a juror because you do all this at the time of jury selection. So that's a problem. And the other problem that they have, and this is the really big problem, because you can overcome that one if you can show the second one. There's no prejudice. There's no prejudice. Even before reading the motions or knowing any details, I said, how does having a different juror actually prejudice Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp? So if you have person A and person B, and you, you think you've got person A who's supposed to show up or whatever, but person B comes in and you ask them all the questions, you actually do the voir dire of person B and say, yes, this person will be good for the trial and they get seated. And then trial gets over and you're like, no, I wanted person A because person B shouldn't have been there. Well, what about person B actually harmed your client is the real question. Now, if person B was Johnny Depp's sister, for example, then you've got a problem. But if person B is just random person off the street and so is person A, then there's no issue. She had every opportunity to object to, uh, to object to or to voir dire on the issues. Parties generally must make objections uh, at the time of the ruling of the order is made to put the court on notice that the issue is meant to be preserved. Of course, they didn't do that ever. Um, that's This is basic law practice, and they didn't do it because they didn't have a problem because the juror, again, they didn't care about the date. They probably didn't even look at it because the juror in the jury box is the same guy that they've wadeered and that they probably did a ton of background research on. They checked the social medias. Uh, they checked, um, you know, any criminal reporting records, uh, pulled background reports, probably pulled like my life reports or whatever. They've done all of the research that they were going to do and the same guy walked through the door. So they didn't have a concern about the birthday because there's nothing to be concerned about. This is all about, is there prejudice? That's the critical portion. Is there prejudice to Amber Heard? And no, there was no prejudice to Amber Heard. She's just mad that she lost. All right. Furthermore, wall parties must make this objection while following the above procedure. The party moving under this code section must provide some evidence of prejudice. Defendant has neither followed the proper procedure nor shown evidence of prejudice. Defendant does not allege juror 15's inclusion on the jury prejudice her in any way. Juror was vetted, sat for the entire jury, deliberated, and reached a verdict. The only evidence before this court is that the juror and all jurors followed their oaths, the court's instructions and orders. This court is bound by the competent decision of this jury. Mike, drop. It's over. It's over. This order is final. So. They can appeal on this. They will lose if this is their grounds for appeal. It won't even be close. The law on this is crystal fucking clear. The court TV. <laughs> so 
sorry. I haven't looked through all the pictures. But of course, they're milking. They're milking Amber Heard, like on a milking table or whatever, for, for clicks. There's no milk in there, court. TV. It's just dust. Yeah. I would, I would much like to move on, but I try to be complete in coverage. Uh, when, when able, that was one that I've wanted to cover, uh, since it, it puts the nail in the, in the trial court levels coffin. Na, 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 na. Hey, 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 goodbye. <laughs>